witness SpaceX's unparalleled efficiency as Ship 28 and Booster 10 take center stage in their meteoric flight debut. When it comes to speedy turnarounds, SpaceX knows no bounds. In a testament to their exceptional craftsmanship and future-oriented vision, both Ship 28 and Booster 10 were meticulously built and deemed flight-ready well in advance of the highly awaited Orbital Flight Test 2, OFT-2. Brace yourself for a mesmerizing display of precision engineering as you delve into the awe-inspiring universe of SpaceX. Buckle up, space enthusiasts, because this is a journey you won't want to miss. Join us on this epic journey and get ready to be captivated by the three forces that unlock the mysteries of Cosmos, OFT-2, Ship 28, and Booster 10. Tune in now and be inspired by the reinvention of space travel curious to no more dive deeper into these thrilling SpaceX endeavors in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. Off 3. Testing and Prototype Preparations SpaceX has rapidly progressed through testing Ship 28 and Booster 10 in preparation for the third integrated flight test, IFT-3. Ship 28 underwent engine firing tests, cryogenic tests, and a spin prime test, demonstrating the company's commitment to a swift turnaround. Booster 10 also underwent tests, including a partial fill of propellant tanks ahead of a potential static fire, although some issues during testing led to a longer hold. Both prototypes underwent successful static fires today, signaling their readiness for the upcoming launch. Today's test included a single-engine test for Ship 28 and 33 engines for Booster 10. The quick turnaround time is a testament to SpaceX's efficiency. But it's essential to note that Ship 28 and Booster 10 were already built. And flight ready before Orbital Flight Test 2, OFT-2. Unlike the first orbital launch, regulatory delays may not pose a significant obstacle this time. As the FAA only needs to review SpaceX's mishap report from OFT-2, this streamlined process suggests that the launch timeline for OFT-3 could proceed more smoothly. Ship 28 and Booster 10, Inspection and Maintenance With the completion of testing for Ship 28 and Booster 10, the next step for SpaceX is to inspect both prototypes for any damages, if any serious issues are identified, the prototypes might need to be transported back to the production facility for repairs before returning to the launch pad. Ship 28, having undergone two static fire sessions, may require inspection and maintenance of its thermal protection system, TPS tiles, especially those affected by the shock waves during testing. Ensuring the integrity of the prototypes is crucial for a safe and successful launch. Full Stock Wet Dress Rehearsal, WDR Following the testing phase, SpaceX will proceed with a full-stack wet dress rehearsal, WDR, a critical step in the launch preparation process. This rehearsal involves loading propellant into the spacecraft and simulating launch day procedures up to the moments before engine ignition. The successful completion of the WDR is a key indicator of SpaceX's readiness for the upcoming launch. It allows the team to identify and address any issues that may arise. During the final preparations, ensuring a smooth and error-free launch day. Regulatory Delays for OFT-3 While SpaceX is diligently preparing for OFT-3, there are legal and regulatory aspects that must be addressed. The FAA is yet to conclude its investigation into OFT-2 based on SpaceX's report. Importantly, this is not a lengthy investigation, but a post-analysis from SpaceX's side, monitored by the company. Contrary to misconceptions, the FAA does not need to conduct a new environmental assessment, EA for SpaceX, as it has already been completed and approved for Starbase. The most reasonable expectation is that the regulatory approval could occur between the end of January and mid-February, paving the way for an orbital launch within that time frame. Launch Timeline and SpaceX's Efficiency Despite the potential regulatory hurdle, SpaceX is demonstrating an unprecedented level of efficiency in preparing for OFT-3. The recent testing of Ship 28 and Booster 10, along with the anticipated inspection, maintenance and WDR, points towards a swift progression toward the launch. Their momentum is unmatched, especially with the Falcon team achieving a groundbreaking 96 missions to space. Following this remarkable feat, the SpaceX Starbase engineers swiftly embarked on engine tests for both the first and second stage Starship boosters. Each test held distinct objectives, ignition of a single Raptor engine on a Flight 3 Starship, demonstrating a flight-like start of 4 in in-space burn. 
SpaceX updated sharing on X. The recent test involving Ship 28 appears to be a pivotal step in demonstrating engine startup procedures during flight in space, a critical maneuver utilized for rocket control and trajectory adjustments during descent. Maintaining control during descent is crucial, as a loss of control could lead to an unpredictable final destination for the rocket. Comparison has been drawn between this test and the deorbit burn of Ship 26. While similar, it's important to note the nuances between the two. An in-space burn after the primary ignition and initial burn to achieve orbits signifies an engine startup in space, distinct from a deorbit burn specifically aimed at reducing the spacecraft's velocity to re-enter the atmosphere. The implication here suggests that Ship 28 might undertake an orbital journey and potentially perform a deorbit burn a critical maneuver that prepares the spacecraft for atmospheric re-entry. SpaceX achieved another remarkable milestone just an hour and a half later. Just completed static fire test of Flight 3 Super Heavy Booster. Elon Musk shared on X. The test firing of all 33 engines marked a significant milestone showcasing the potential maximum thrust of 7,590 tons or 16.7 million pounds. Notably, this test's throttle performance seems comparable to Booster 9, despite being Booster 10's initial ignition attempt without any prior pre-burner or spin-prime tests. What's impressive is the evident maturity of the Raptor engines and the booster system akin to the meticulous proof testing seen in modern Falcon boosters. The successful test also highlights the effectiveness of the Booster B-Day, flame deflector, and the recent upgrades in the tank farm, which include additional recondenses and subchillers. These enhancements enable quicker cooling of pipework accelerating the propellant loading process, improving efficiency during detanking and potentially allowing faster turnaround between launch attempts. The shared video of the 33-engine Starship Super Heavy static fire on SpaceX's X page revealed a clear sequence of engine shutdown. Marking the end of the test, the pace of progress suggests that the first three integrated Starship flight tests could potentially launch within an unprecedented 12-month timeframe, a notable achievement for such a monumental rocket. The prospect of Starship reaching orbit in the coming months seems increasingly likely. After achieving these milestones, SpaceX's immediate course of action includes the progression towards Starship's IFT-4, 5, and 6. The recent developments at SpaceX continues to amaze, with Booster 12 being moved to masses for proof testing, likely intended for Flight 5. Simultaneously, Ship 29 made its way to Mega Bay 2 for Raptor installation marking the inaugural use of the new Ship 8 for engine installation and internal work. Additionally, Ship 30 was expected to follow Booster 12 to masses at the time of this report. Since SpaceX began testing Starship rockets in 2020, the company has made significant strides in both production and testing. The progress includes the development of new Raptor engines, the implementation of a new water deluge system at the pad, upgrades to the Super Heavy Booster, and accelerated manufacturing processes. Manufacturing efficiency stands as a crucial challenge for SpaceX in achieving its ambitious goals with Starship. After all, the commotion with Booster 10's attempted testing last week, the big question was whether we would see another attempt during this week. Just the day after, Booster 10's transport stand was moved from beside the horizontal methane tanks over to the staging area next to the orbital pad. We were thinking that perhaps Booster 10 would be lifted off the launch mount and rolled back to the production site for some inspections, but that never actually happened. It seemed that SpaceX were uncertain of what to do with Booster 10 as they had obviously chosen to now keep it on the pad. Important overpressure notice hinting on a static fire for Friday. Highway 4 was closed off, the detonation suppression system was tested, and soon enough the launch site was clear. Both of the tank farms were vending, so we looked to be up for a double header test, but first, to make room for booster tents testing, the arms moved back up the tower into the launch position. Almost as soon as that was done, all eyes were on ship 28 as the frost started creeping up the liquid oxygen tank, shortly followed by the engine chill process kicking in. Propellant load continued as you would expect, but then the orbital launch mount also sprung to life. Things were looking smooth across the board, and before we knew it. Now, before we even had time to digest that excitement, notice this vent through the launch tower. Yep, it was time to move to Booster 10, which was indeed much more incredible again. The vent on the launch mount continued to get more intense as they prepared to load the propellant onto the booster. 
Following that, wow, they were really putting the new subchillers to the test here as the propellant poured into the massive beast. The upgrade to the tank farm is very noticeable here. Actually just watch this comparison of the propellant being loaded onto one of Booster 9's static fires. Booster 10 here finished its liquid oxygen propellant load in just 39 minutes, a massive improvement. So yes, we were all go for a huge static fire, but hang on, what about a spin prime test? It looks like they were skipping right over that because here was the detonation suppression system, the water erupted from the steel plate. That was over 10 seconds of furious action with all super heavy 33 Raptor engines ahead of Flight 3. Yes, it now seems that SpaceX has a lot of confidence in the Raptor. Engines there being able to just bypass a separate spin prime test. In future, that should speed up the testing campaign a lot. Everything happened here so quickly and while all this was happening, Ship 28 of course had already detanked and was in fact still slightly frozen as the booster ignited. This means that ship production needs to be roughly an order of magnitude higher than booster production. To achieve Mars colonization in roughly three decades, we need ship production to be 100 per year, but ideally rising to 300 per year. So that's all about SpaceX's Starship updates. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time. By the way, are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app? Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the TalkTalk Talk app, here down below.